Okay, so next topic is electrostatic equilibrium. So when an object is in an electrostatic equilibrium, it means there's, even though there might be mobile charges present in a conductor, they are no longer any net motion of mobile charges going on. So that's electrostatic equilibrium. If you look at those conditions, I gave you three conditions. There's really four. I kind of nixed the fourth, and I'm just going to stick with these three. It's, uh, just the fourth is a little bit funky of a situation. Uh, but these three, the electric field is zero everywhere inside an isolated conductor. So if you have a conducting sphere or, or box or whatever that's hollow, everywhere inside it, the electric field is zero. So that's your first part of electrostatic equilibrium. Um, Cool. Excess charges reside on the surface of the conductor. We said that about you earlier. If you were a conductor, the excess charges are all going to reside on the surface. Why would that be? Well, if, well, even the interior ones are allowed to move and stuff like that. But let's say you have excess electrons. Why do they want to spread out to the surface? Yep, there are repulsive force going on, so they want to get as far apart as possible. That's why I go to the surface. Uh, third property here is the electric field lines outside a conductor are perpendicular to its surface. Perpendicular to its surface. And you can kind of see why this would be. So if, again, let's just say I had a hollow sphere. So notice the electric field lines coming off this are going to be perpendicular to the surface at every single point. Let's just think about what if they weren't perpendicular. Let's just say what if they were parallel for a second. Well, if they were parallel and there was a positive charge right here, would it feel a force? It would feel a force this way because it's a positive charge in an electric field. It feels a force in the same direction, right? So if I had any component of electric field that had any component, it doesn't have to be perfectly parallel, but any parallel component, then there's going to be charges that feel a force and they're going to move. But to be in electrostatic equilibrium, no forces, no mobile charges are moving. So that means that the electric field must everywhere be perpendicular to the surface. And it doesn't have to be just a nice spherical round surface. It could be any shape you want. So the electric field for an electric, to be in electrostatic equilibrium, the electric field will always be perpendicular to the surface. Cool. So those are kind of our three conditions of electrostatic equilibrium. Cool. Which takes us to problem number six here. So we've got two lovely spheres here, one that's solid in the center and then one that's hollow on the outside. The solid one at the center, positive four nanocoulombs of charge. The one on the outside, seven nanocoulombs of charge. So, however, because these are conductors, charges can move around. And because of this lovely positive charge in the center here, guess what some of the electrons in this outer surface want to do? They want to polarize this thing and move towards the center as far as they can. So this inner surface is going to become negatively charged. And so if the electrons have moved towards that inner surface, well, then there's less electrons on the outer surface and it has become positively charged. Cool. And the question is, what charges do they have? Well, the inner surface's charge is due to what's inside and it's going to perfectly try and balance that. And so in this case, to perfectly balance the positive four nanocoulomb charge of the sphere inside, what should the inner surface's charge be? Good, negative four nanocoulombs. Well, we know the entire charge on this lovely outer hollow sphere is seven nanocoulombs. That was given. The question though is then, what would the charge on the outer surface be? Well, the inner surface and outer surface have to add up to that total charge. So then what would that outer surface be? Good positive 11 nanocoulombs. That way, 11 and negative 4 still add up to a total of 7 nanocoulombs. Cool. Just a simple charge distribution question. Pretty common one that shows up. Not super difficult or any crazy calculations.